Most art means nothing. It's just a very light hypnosis that deafens the pain of being alive. Turn off that camera. I like art, but I also don't like art. If I can do art that pushes boundaries or does something new, I think that excites me more than more than doing something good. I think I'd like to do something weird and new. Making good things holds no enjoyment for me. I've been sort of fascinated with the comedic properties of the idea of death. The idea that death could be disappointed in his job the way any of us are disappointed in our own jobs is fascinating. What's to say we aren't doing shit that's just as awful as death himself? The story is about the psychoanalyst that reunites death with his child. This child is not taking on the family business and uh, like many people's children is a source of shame. Hi, Dad. My mom was pretty good about teaching us to make books. And she would take this printer paper that she had from work. I don't know if you know the kind, it's got like green lines on it and it's got a perforated edge that can come off but has circles in it. She used to take yarn, encourage us to make a story put yarn through that and uh, you'd have a book, a bound book when you were all done with it. It was great. And uh, I probably produced some of my finest work then. I think the comic's more famous than I'll ever be. PBF got to be like a real hassle. I would have to pull on nighters multiple times a week. My circadian rhythms, I don't know if they've ever fully recovered. But um, I feel good to be making a book again. Feels good. Nick's current project, uh, Notes on a Case of Melancholia, is a mammoth undertaking. Nick got money for this project through a Kickstarter. I think he made over like $100,000 or something, which is gonna go into the production costs as well. He's, he's probably feeling the weight from how many backers he has. It's uh, quite a few people anxiously awaiting uh, this book. I think I'm like a year and a half late with the delivery of the book. I hate looking at it that way because it doesn't feel that long and it doesn't feel like it should take that long. Every picture in the book, every plate has been scratched by Nick. It's a subtractive process. He starts off with a plate of ink and slowly takes away to form an image. There must be a million strokes on one, on one plate. I just fell in love with how uncommon it is. Like thinking about applying white instead of black sort of corresponded to the idea of thinking about death as in a way that I wouldn't normally think about it. If I did this another way, if I just used a goddamn pen, I could have been done like a year ago. Sometimes I regret having undertaken a technique that uh, has cost me so much, but I, I, I do love the what comes out of it. I love what comes out of it. I get a happiness deep down in the foot of my soul that uh, I don't get from doing stuff that's easy. That's one for the, the to talk to the psychiatrist about. I don't I don't know why I like hard things. I just do. The book sucks. I'm gonna get right back to work. But if it's good, you're gonna go farm. Maybe I'll relax a little bit. Start a family. You get a haircut. You get a haircut. I think the pressure of having missed a deadline forces him to want to make his book really good, which just makes his deadline even worse. Okay, so this is a comment left on your Kickstarter page by one of your backers. The best artists ship work regularly and are prolific and engage with the world. The shitty artists get lost in their own thought masturbations and perfectionism. 
I shouldn't be surprised that someone doing a book about melancholia would be a bit depressed himself, but it's just ridiculous at this point. Finish it and get it out there. The longer you wait, the more impossible the expectations by others and yourself become. What do you want me to say about that? Uh, what do you think about it? Might be spot on. I guess it's worth mentioning that the time I've been working on this book since it was kickstarted is a fraction of the overall time I've been working on the book. The better part of last year was spent accumulating scores and scores of ideas that far outweighs the amount of concepts that actually did make it into the book. This is probably the oldest incarnation. I've been working on Succession since 2008. Mortimer and the Twinkles was started probably thinking about a story that involved a period of time where I, I wanted the book close and then a little the death was something that was in 2014. I wasn't really able to be the Edward Strike Death and Hero going to the fall in love with the moon. moon. That's a lot of the work I've done for books that I have not embarked on. It's sad to say, but I've probably spent quite a few months of my life uh, working out the narration for this book. It was only recently that I realized that uh, I didn't want words for this story. I had to get rid of a bunch of pages because of that. I got rid of um, a whole sequence where the doctor was having flashbacks of his life. I realized that without words, I, I can't indicate that his life is flashing before his eyes. It had to go. Couldn't do it. This is one of the many reasons why this project takes a while is because I'll spend quite a bit of time on panels that get botched. I have about as many botched panels as I have finished pages. If you paint a room and you don't like a color, you can repaint it. I've even completed pages and I've looked and I've thought to myself, you know what? This could be a little better. That's the kind of gamble you take when you try to make something special. Like you just have to shrug your shoulders and say, oops, I spent five months of my life barking up a wrong tree. Creativity is almost like this garden of seeds that you spray shoot a bunch of water in with a faulty hose. You don't know where the water's gonna go, you don't know where the seeds are, but you just gotta keep sifting through that soil to see if anything's germinating. And if it is, you gotta have a green thumb, get it some sunlight, make sure it's thriving. Hard to do. Hard to do consistently. I think for a lot of the book, Nick was still forming the story, even though he was still scratching plates at the same time. I think he's kind of lost track of time just working by himself. But it'll probably be beautiful because his magnificent brain is always thinking about it. Car went by my window the other day, Johnny Cash is just singing. And it just it struck me like, wow, he's not dead. That car is singing for him. We spend our lives perceiving ourselves as something outside of this, like we're a, a boat amidst a violent ocean. Just not the case. We're like a we're like a wart on the face of God. And I think sad thoughts breed far more interesting avenues of philosophy than, than happy thoughts. I know I'm not gonna get a jewel by shining a piece of shit, but I can't really live with myself if I make something common. There's just 
there's no limit to how good art can be. And if we don't, if we aren't a little bit intrepid about it, we're never gonna find out. Okay, Nick. The book is a year and a half overdue from its original deadline. How much longer until it's finished? The majority of plates are complete. Uh, barring any circumstance where I need to reconfigure anything or re-examine uh, what these pages are doing, um, I should be able to, to get them to a place where um, the remaining pages uh, wouldn't require more than... It wouldn't be any more than, than that. I, I, I don't foresee it being taking any longer than that time.